everybody? All right, I like it, I like it, I like it. We feel ready, all right. Well, uh, I want to welcome everyone to the 2023 Techstars Founder Catalyst, sponsored by Stanley Black & Decker End of Program Showcase. Welcome. We are so very thankful to have you with us tonight. Uh, we are so very thankful to have all of you who are joining us online on the live stream tonight with us tonight. Uh, for those of you on the live stream, we've got a live stream chat. So feel free to go ahead and drop those comments, those congratulations, those cheers for our founders in that live stream chat. I'm sure that they would love to take a look at that later. But for the folks in the room, hope you are enjoying a refreshment, a little bit of a nibble. Uh, feel free to get up throughout the evening if you wanna go grab a little bit of an extra bite. We've got the bar out uh, in the hallway there for you as well. One request from me is that our founders have worked really, really hard to be able to get their pitches ready. They are gonna be presenting three minute pitches. The only request of mine is that you do not get up while a founder is doing their pitch, all right? So give them their time on stage. Uh, while we're transitioning, if you need to get up, use the restroom, grab a little nibble, grab a drink at the bar, feel, feel free. All right, so who are we? Uh, Techstars is an organization that exists because we believe that good ideas can come from anywhere. We want to empower founders to be able to use entrepreneurship to change the world for the better. And so that started with our accelerator programs uh, a number of years ago, uh, but has evolved into what we are today. So we started with one accelerator. We now have 53 accelerator programs across the globe. Now, in the midst of those accelerator programs, we have 20 unicorns. Right here tonight in the room, we could be sitting in the midst of another unicorn. Yeah, you can, you can give a little snap for that. I like that. We stand now at 105 billion in regard to a cumulative market cap for those companies' valuations. And we've got over 3,800 mentors supporting our accelerators across the world. Now we understand at Techstars that there are different levels for entrepreneurship. And so as we progressed along, we decided let's expand and develop more to support a fuller bandwidth of the ecosystem. So we've got an amazing ecosystem development department now that is working very hard at that. We acquired Startup Weekends and are running Startup Weekends across the globe so that people can get a little taste of what entrepreneurship feels like. And in conjunction with our accelerator programs, we a couple of years ago launched our Founder Catalyst program, which is what brings us here tonight. These are companies and founders that we see a ton of promise in, and we want to come alongside them, encourage them with a number of different uh, modules in this program. Now, what this comes down to is that we're the world's most active pre-seed investor. We're sneaking up on almost 4,000 portfolio companies' investments. We have no plans on stopping anytime soon. So this train is gonna continue down the track and it is our absolute hope that some of the folks here in this room become some of our portfolio companies. Now, the Founder Catalyst program itself exists as part of four core programmatic modes. First, we give the entrepreneurs entrepreneurial education through master classes. Secondarily, we provide mentorship. Thirdly, we provide this wonderful environment for them to get up and pitch and share with you what they've done throughout this program. And finally, we do something called cohort building. Now, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's them building relationships with one another. And people might not understand the value of that, but it is a tremendous value to a founder. One of the things that we've heard over and over and over again in the midst of this program is how isolating entrepreneurship can feel and how important and valuable it's been to be able to have founders that they can sit shoulder to shoulder with who understand the type of challenges that they're going after, the type of things that they're building, can encourage them. 
We have a number of people who have said, you know, I can be having a really rough, rough day, rough week, and I show up at Founder Catalyst, I'm able to talk to these other founders, and I'm just encouraged. And so that's a great benefit of being able to bring people together and build community, and we're so thankful for that and our role in being able to connect founders. Now, in the midst of our program, these founders have experienced 15 master classes on everything from product market fit to customer discovery to venture capital. Um, and then over 350 mentor meetings have been scheduled. So these founders aren't playing around. They've kept very busy with what they've been doing, who they've been meeting with, and we're so thankful to be able to provide that for them. Again, this program has 21 different companies in it. And so they've also been able to come together and support one another side by side as they build. Now, one of our goals at Founder Catalyst is to help encourage and develop these companies to the stage where they can then apply for and do well at the accelerator level. We are very proud to announce that 16 of the 21 companies in our cohort have applied for a Techstars Accelerator. <laughs> Now, while some of those applications are being evaluated, we do know that two of the companies in the cohort actually got accepted into an accelerator during our cohort. And so we wanna separate, so we wanna celebrate those guys as well. Uh, and so if I could have one-to-one -one and Joylet stand up. <laughs> These lovely founders have been uh, now with the team at Techstars New York City, and we're so encouraged for them. Uh, we have been just so happy to have them along the journey with us, and we wish you all the best as you progress to your next demo day with Techstars New York City. <laughs> now, programs like this cannot happen in isolation, right? We have a lot of people supporting programs like this, and so we have some thank yous to give out. First of all, I would like to thank Loyola University for hosting us tonight. Now, in the spirit of ecosystem development, we understand that we want multiple programs and communities. And so one of the things that Loyola does uh, is that they also have uh, an accelerator program called the Baltapreneurs. And they have recently just set their Baltapreneurs class. And so we also wanna say congratulations to all of the folks that have just been accepted. I've been informed that uh, two of the companies are actually students at Loyola. So let's give those guys a hand as well. <laughs> We also have this amazing uh, stakeholder in the Baltimore community uh, called Upsurge. Now, Upsurge has been kind enough to come alongside us in support of us with their staff and with their facilities. They are the partner for the Techstars Equitech Accelerator. And when they found out that we were doing the Founder Catalyst program, they were very eager to come alongside this program as well. We've been so thankful to have their support uh, their spirit is incredible. They care about founders so deeply, and that is just so evident in the Baltimore community. And so it is my honor to invite up to the stage Corey Bailey, who is the CEO of Upsurge Baltimore. He's going to share a little bit with you. Give it up for Audra Gibson, please. Audra, Jerome, and the Founder Catalyst team have been phenomenal. And I know that these founders really appreciate the support and effort that you put into them. We're really looking forward to hearing from all of you. So give yourselves a hand real quick for me too. So Upsurge is a professional ecosystem building organization. It feels good to say that because we've been sort of searching for our purpose. And we have a vision for Baltimore to be recognized as the first Equitech city in the world and a model for equitable economic growth. We do that by anchoring ourselves in founders like you, but in growing the different parts of our ecosystem. So what does that look like? Equitech for us is our aspiration to grow this city in the most equitable way possible. We do that by anchoring ourselves in diverse leadership, 
I look around this room and I see a real set of diverse leaders. We've got people of color, we've got women, we've got people that understand that their technologies are really gonna shape the future of the world and create positive outcomes for people. So I'm really looking forward to hearing about the technologies you're working on. We also do that by anchoring ourselves in equitable systems and practices. So that means that as we go about the process of building our ecosystem, who do we engage, who's at the table, whose voices are being heard, we're very intentional about that. And finally, creating a culture of belonging in tech. Tech can feel like a foreign language to some people, right? We're talking about cap tables and we're talking about revenue and growth and people are like, what in the world is happening? So we wanna make sure that everyone feels like they belong in the tech ecosystem in Baltimore. And so it's important for us to have a connecting network of accelerators, of support programs, of procurement offices. We wanna make sure that the entire ecosystem is focused on our tech startups and how they can grow and excel in our ecosystem. So we're really proud to have Stanley Black & Decker as a partner. We're really proud to have the Founder Catalyst program in Baltimore, and we're really excited to hear from you founders. So thank you for being here. We're bullish on Baltimore, so as long as you're part of this Techstars family, you're welcome in Baltimore. Come here, grow your businesses, find your next customers. We'll be ready to support your growth, okay? So let's go. Thank you, Corey. Uh, we had the pleasure of doing a founder panel during our founder retreat, uh, and Don Myers and Rebecca Rosenberg, who, that's right, they, get, they deserve a woo, um, they went through the Equitech Accelerator program, and so it was so cool to have this full circle experience where they could then sit with our founders and be able to share wisdom and experience. And my hope in every sort of form is that some of you seated here uh, in the next year or two would be able to be on one of those founder panels, being able to then pour out knowledge to the next generation as well. So thank you again, Corey, and thank you to all of Upsurge for supporting us so well. Now, uh, in the midst of this, we also mentioned that we had some masterclass speakers, and so we want to give a round of applause to all the folks on the screen here uh, who spent their time and energy <laughs> providing their knowledge and experience. And then uh, our mentors have been absolutely incredible. Uh, these are folks that have given of their time and their energy and expertise every single week for the past 10 weeks. Uh, it is a very great joy of mine that they do not fit on one slide. And so we want to say a huge thank you to our mentors. Um, and let's give them a very big round of applause. If you are in the audience and you are a mentor, we'd love to acknowledge you. So feel free. I see one of you at least. So go ahead and stand up. Do it. <laughs> there we go, there we go, some mentors in the audience. We are so thankful for each and every one of our mentors. Uh, there are a lot of them that are joining us on the live stream. We had mentors all the way from South Africa to Alaska. And so we're so appreciative of you, uh, for all of you joining us virtually. We just wanna say our very most heartfelt thanks. Uh, the difference that you have made for these founders has been abundant and we are so thankful for you. Now next up, we would not be in this room if it were not for Stanley Black & Decker. I cannot say enough great words about Stanley Black & Decker and how supportive they have been of founders and specifically of tech stars over the years. They have run a number of accelerator programs and this last year they decided to come to the table and expand their reach by coming into the Founder Catalyst program. So it is my joy to invite to the stage uh, Marty Gway. Let's give Marty a hand. And then he's going to bring up Joe Sims. You could have tried to say enough words, but you didn't. You can, um, I told, you know, we're, we're the three minutes of, um, we're going to do it together because Joe and I are a little slow. We're thrilled to be part of this um, endeavor in this um, Founder Catalyst program. We've run several accelerators. I told this team that when we first started person uh, to person that this was probably the best group of founders that I've seen, even ones that have been in accelerators and raised money. So you're, you've got a great future ahead of you if you can stick with it. 
We're thrilled to be with Upsurge. Corey uh, has become a friend. Maddie also, we're, we're very bullish on Baltimore. Um, we had a chance to make a decision on where to put this accelerator uh, a few years back and um, the decision was difficult. Uh, the outcome was perfect because we really feel that we're part of this movement uh, that Upsurge is leaving. I get the privilege of working with great people in Stanley Black and Decker, none better than my colleague Joe Sims. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Joe. Thanks, Marty. Where are you going? I'm gonna watch you. <laughs> I can't say enough great words about you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. So first of all, this has been a, a great experience. I think Marty talked about the intentionality um, about Baltimore, uh, and that's not, um, that's not random. So for us, having deep roots here in, uh, in the Baltimore area, going back uh, to uh, the early 20th century, uh, to 1910, uh, our kind of bedrock um, is kind of where we've established roots in Towson, greater Baltimore. So that's important. The other thing is, uh, which is really great about our relationship with Techstars Upsurge is it really is a vehicle for us. Um, it's not just community outreach for us, but it's very intentional, focused, purposeful community outreach. And what I mean by that is it's critically important for us to invest in uh, the entrepreneurial community. In particular, innovation is a lifeblood of our company. So not just investing in early stage startups, but supporting the broader uh, entrepreneur ecosystem, as well as the tech ecosystem. Second part of that is Corey touched on it. How do we do that and make sure we're doing it in an equitable way? So for us, it's extremely important that we can create these pathways for underrepresented early stage startups to come in, get the support, the mentoring they need so they can ultimately build a scalable enterprise. And then the last part of this is, um, this is a long game for us. And so the relationship we've had with Techstars, now with Corey, Maddie, Upsurge, I'm thrilled to say I've recently joined the advisory board at Upsurge. And so this is not kind of a flash in the pan for us. We've been here for a long time and now we really feel like we've got great sustainable partners in this area so we can continue to build out what uh, Corey described as Equitech. So with that, thank you to all the founders, for all of our Stanley Black & Decker mentors, and uh, we're looking forward to a great show this evening. So with that, I'll turn it over. Thank you, Joe. All right, uh, so those are some big thank yous. Thank you again to Stanley Black & Decker. We're so thankful to have you as a partner uh, and a long-standing partner, and we're so excited to do this again with you next year in 2024. All right, now last thank you. Um, I just wanna spend a little time saying a few words about my team. So uh, I have the great privilege and opportunity to lead an amazing team <laughs> who's put this together. Uh, and I just wanna say a couple things about each of them. Uh, Olga Bartnicki uh, came to us at the start of the program when I interviewed her, one of the things that she talked about was not only her, uh, her successes as a founder, but also talked freely about the things that had gone wrong and the things that she was able to learn from as a founder. And I very quickly got the impression that she would be a person that founders could be vulnerable with and could trust with both the exciting things and the hard parts of being an entrepreneur. And over the last 10 weeks, uh, she has met, she has had more meetings with founders than any other human on our team. So I just wanna celebrate Olga. She is deeply invested in your success. I hope all of you know that. When we have team meetings, she'll get on and talk about you almost like she's part of your teams. She, she really, really is rooting for you and and believes in you in, in ways that you probably don't even understand. And so let's give Olga a round of applause. <laughs> Second, I wanna talk about Alex Cottingham, this lovely lady right down in front. Uh, Alex, how long have we known each other? A number of years, a number of years. Uh, Alex was the first person to greet me when I walked through the doors of my first accelerator program. Uh, she was getting her master's in communication at that point. And it's been amazing to see her grow in her career. 
Uh, she has been the director of communications now for a number of startups. Uh, she has helped lead accelerator programs herself. She has a deep knowledge of startups. And Alex has this innate ability to be able to listen to someone and pull out the story, pull out what they need to share with other people to simplify concepts. She thinks really, really quickly on her feet and she is able to relay to founders what they need to share so that the everyday person can understand what they're trying to build and what they're trying to do and what they're trying to accomplish. And that's a really, really cool skill to have when we do have an industry where there's a lot of vernacular and vocabulary that people don't always understand. She is able to break things down and really get to the heart of the story and the heart of the communication. She also deeply cares about you guys. And I am so thankful to have had her on this journey. So let's give Alex a round of applause. <laughs> Finally, Jerome Nikolai, I could not possibly ask for a better teammate to have walked through this program with. Everything behind the scenes in terms of operation, organization, having all of the little details taken care of, Jerome is at the heart of that. He is such a joy to work with. He has come from an amazing background as well. Uh, I'm so thankful that you decided to take this journey with Techstars. Personally, I'm very thankful for you as a teammate. Uh, he makes my days so much better and happier and easier. Um, and he just so genuinely and deeply cares for you guys as well. I know I keep saying that, but this is really true. <laughs> and. Uh, I get a lot of time in events like this to be able to stand on a stage and uh, my team doesn't always get that recognition and so I really want to acknowledge their hard work and everything that they've poured into this program. Founders, I know that you know this, but I want the rest of the world to know this as well. So let's give Jerome Nikolai a giant round of applause. <laughs> All right, let's pitch. <laughs> All right, so here's how the format's going to work. Three minute pitches from each of the companies. I want to bring your attention to the fact that we are doing audience awards. Now, this works for all of you wonderful people that are watching us on the live stream as well. So you can scan this QR code it will take you to some questions, some awards that we're gonna give out at the end of this event. Here are the awards. <laughs> Don't vote yet, <laughs> because you haven't seen the pitches. But I want to share these with you so that you can be thinking about, hmm, who was the best speaker tonight? Ooh, who, whose company am I really excited about using in the future? So be thinking about that as these founders are pitching and at the end, we will share the results with you. So we will cue you when it is time to vote, but go ahead and uh, I'm gonna put it up there one more time, scan that QR code if you have not done so already, and you can vote and encourage these founders. All right. Without further ado, this is our presentation order. I have to give like full recognition to the first team and the last team. It is very difficult in an event like this to lead off hitting, and it can be very difficult to have to wait to the end to share your wonderfulness with the rest of the world. I have every confidence in the world that these teams are gonna do fabulous at that. No worries about that whatsoever. But it is my absolute joy to bring up our very first team and so let's give a huge round of applause to Realist. Hello. So Realist is a video first talent marketing and hiring platform 
built for Gen Z. We replace written job descriptions with videos made about the jobs. And because we're video first, we're able to take the jobs to the job seekers where they spend their time, on social media and in private groups like Slack. Now, video first hiring wasn't possible until today. Companies can now get brand safe videos affordably, quickly, and most importantly, video first hiring is the most effective way to hire. Our approach results in 30 times better applicant to hire ratios than leading job platforms out today, and 20 times more referrals. Employers, 63% of them, are telling us that they are struggling to hire Gen Z talent, costing billions of dollars in lost production and sales. And it's not surprising because they are relying on tools built for boomers. So let's look and see how Realist works. So employers make videos about their jobs. Realist automatically targets and posts social media ads about those jobs. Job seekers are able to apply in seconds. And Realist uses the data, the performance data, to continually improve both the videos and the targeting. That's the improvement. Um, so in the last few months, our videos have been viewed over 1.5 million times with 98% targeting accuracy. We've helped companies across industries, including manufacturing, construction, retail, hospitality, and health services. And our customers range in size from six people to 45,000 people. We've helped these customers achieve 95% applicant to hire ratios with 90% retention. And we've generated 325,000 in revenue. So we have a recurring revenue model with prices starting for small and medium-sized businesses at $600 a month and starting for enterprises at $12,000 a year. We are tackling a large, growing, and underserved market of $11 billion to service and hiring and attracting Gen Z talent. Our vision is to be the place where the world's jobs are captured, shared, and filled. And we are the founders to lead Realist to success. Sean, the CEO, is a full stack software developer with 14 years experience in HR tech. He built a social media hiring platform that is the precursor to Realist. I spearheaded growth for venture-backed startups, securing heavy hitters like Toshiba, HP, AOL, from idea to contract. We'd like to thank Techstars and Stanley Black & Decker for an amazing program. And we'd like to thank all of you for your attendance here tonight. And if you know of anyone looking to hire great people, please reach out. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Ritesh Tolia, Chief Revenue Officer and Co-Founder at Telepresence. I'm here to talk about future of field work and uh, basically how Telepresence is going to make a difference and lead the path in the ARAI powered smart operation solution. We are a SaaS software platform, SaaS solution. We're built for the field workers to enhance operational efficiency, ensure worker safety for all the field workers in the maintenance, repair, installation, inspections of equipment. We are available via tablets, phones, and variable devices. The industry problems that we have seen over the last few years is the aging workforce, not having enough experts out in the field, and therefore a lot of errors in the field. So how do you increase your first time fixed rates reduce downtime, and basically train people on the job for the new rookies coming up. 
the market opportunity, as we see here, is 86.9 billion in 2020, 2020, and now going up to 407 billion in 2030. Our solution, modular yet highly scalable. We basically offer a video on demand, digital workflow, knowledge capture repository, which all of this uh, automatically, se uh, seamlessly integrates with other systems. Uh, use, case, uh, use case study, which I would like to bring your attention to. Uh, telepre telepresence played a pivotal role at the 2022 World Cup, where we were brought in for rail operations. It was not an easy one to win. After a lot of due diligence, we were given an opportunity to deploy telepresence for rail operations, escalator maintenance, and obviously elevator maintenance. You could understand the kind of crowd which is coming from all different train stations, and all this folks needed on the ground was over-the-shoulder guidance to be able to have increase in first-time fixed rates and quicker turnaround times. Go-to-market, very much repeatable. We do work with direct customers, channels, resellers, and systems integrators. Our revenue streams are split in three different buckets. Consulting, pilot could be part of the consulting. Uh, annual licensing revenue due to our SaaS offering. And also software services, wearing a hat of a systems integrator where we do bring a complete end-to-end -end solution. We are industry uh, vertical uh, agnostic, excuse me. Though we are currently, productization is currently in the way for transportation, energy utilities, and mining. Here's our market validation and adoption across a few different verticals, MRO aviation, manufacturing, facilities management, with a lot of good customers. A little bit about us. Myself, CR and co-founder, as you guys already know. In the Tolia, founder and CEO, we both have built other companies in the past, last one was we were in business for 18 years before it got acquired, and here we are doing it again. Thank you very much for this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it. All right. I'm gonna welcome Lump Sum to the stage. Hello, everyone. My name is Twee. I'm the co-founder of this brave startup called Lump Sum, along with my brilliant co-founder, Daniela. She and I have been privileged to work for a range of big and small companies, which taught us a core philosophy that we both share about work, which is the best employee wellness program and benefit is more money. <laughs> this is especially for people who work in roles that don't come with this massive 401k and stock options and vacation time. Now, there are people who tell me, Tui, you know a company's purpose is to penny pinch and pay their staff as little as possible. While there might be some truth to that, data shows that most people who ask for some type of raise or bonus do receive it, which is great. With that being said, most of our benefits come from our paychecks. Debt gets marketed to us even at work, such as mobile paycheck, cash events, loan, installment plan type of thingies, and most people end up quitting their jobs within six months of being denied more compensation. All of this applies to the minimum wage cashier and skilled jobs like teachers. Now, there's a hurdle for the employer, and it's not the scary corporate greed that we like to always blame them for, right? Their base labor cost is always multiplied by 25 to 40 percent, and this is because they have to account for payroll taxes, health insurance fees, retirement fees, et cetera, et cetera. But this is exactly what lump sum is going to help with. Lump Sum is a neobank where a company can offer short-term cash benefits to their staff for a range of reasons such as holiday, life events, cost of living, and performance without all of the surcharges and fees that they would normally experience. So let me give you an example of how we make this dream of cash benefits come true. So we give data to Johns Hopkins Hospital that says, hey, bonuses are great to give during the holiday season. So Johns Hopkins says, awesome, let's give a $500 bonus to 500 staff members. We pay those cash benefits to the staff first via direct deposit, and then Johns Hopkins pays us back with a one-time transaction fee. So because this is treated as debt instead of payroll to the company, and as a grant instead of payroll to the staff, this saves Johns Hopkins tons of money and fees. We also collect feedback from the employees because we want to know that $500 
$1,500 to someone making $30,000 a year or $95,000 a year is being used for something important like debt, bills, or savings. And our end goal is to be able to copyright and sell this software to payroll companies so that it works as a plug-in to their software. In conclusion, as co-founders, we know that as technology continues to boom and that government welfare continues to shrink, the way that we get compensated for our labor will need to be completely reimagined in the long-term future. And Lump Sum is going to be on the forefront to building that pathway and getting people more money. Thank you. Give it up for Lump Sum and welcome to the stage. Gobi Holmes. Hello, 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 everyone. My name is Terrence Nicholson, and I'm the founder and CEO of Gobi Homes. Buying a home should be a joyous occasion for real estate agents and their clients. But unfortunately, due to the complexities of the home purchasing process, it often ends up turning out to be a stressful and strenuous occasion. This is because parties in a real estate transaction far too often work independently instead of as team members, and this leads to numerous issues such as ineffective and inefficient communication and collaboration and severe lack of transparency and accountability throughout the process. Did you all know that real estate is actually the second worst digitized industry worldwide and it's only ahead of hunting and fishing? How many of you knew that? And it shows and the way parties of a real estate transaction uh, collaborate together. There's still a heavy emphasis of sending back and forth endless emails and having clients check the dreaded spam folder looking for important documentation. Not to mention creating endless text messaging threads with all parties involved in the pro uh, uh, process. So what is the solution to all this? An all-in-one collaboration hub where all parties involved in the home purchasing process can unite on one centralized platform to simplify and streamline the home purchasing process. Now, with Gobi Homes, agents and their clients have the ability to go from searching from a home to closing on it 100% virtually. And this is a view of our platform and what our all-in-one ecosystem looks like and how all parties could come together and connect in unison. Our revenue model consists of a freemium version for our consumer users. We have agent pro services for our real estate agents, and we also offer broker services as well. In the future, we also plan to implement packages for lenders and title companies. Our, com our competitive landscape comes across a variety of companies, from CRM tools, to transaction management systems, to listing management systems, to collaboration tools. And what we decided to do was merge together the core features of all these platforms into one simple, easy to use solution. Some traction we've made so far, we created our uh, uh, MVP, uh, demoed it for Exit Realty, for product validation and feedback. We participated in two pre-accelerator pro, uh, pre programs and just recently uh, finished development of our Agent Pro plan, which we are now beta testing again with Exit Realty. Our team consists of myself, Terrence Nicholson. I'm a licensed realtor with over a decade's worth of experience in the real estate industry, as well as a software engineer. William is our lead dev, and Javier is the head of product with uh, experience working at HomeSnap and Zillow. And again, that concludes our presentation, but I just want to leave you all with one thing. Zillow, I mean, <laughs> Gobi Homes is not just a product, it's a solution. Thank you very much. Please welcome to the stage, Probal Labs. Hello everyone, my name is Wari Isaac and I'm the founder and CEO of Probal Labs. Over the past three years, I've worked with Afrobeats artists, taking some from zero to hundreds of thousands of music streams, including one we've worked with who currently has more than 30 million streams on all platforms. Working with those artists, some of the major problems we've encountered are bad recording contracts, lack of direct fan engagement, and the biggest of all is limited funding option. So, we decided to create ProBall. ProBall is a marketplace for Afrobeats music artists and filmmakers to be able to sell music and movie rights to raise funds for their project, create fan engagement, and also earn royalties from their music. Afrobeats is estimated to be an $80 billion industry by 2030, according to Forbes. Just within five years, Afrobeats grew from 
1 billion uh, in 2017 to 13.5 billion in 2022, which is a 550% growth. And currently in 2023, Afrobeat is streamed at 15 billion streams just on Spotify. Apple Music recorded 500% DJ mix consumption, and Nigeria alone recorded 3,000% year on year Afrobeat streaming growth. How our platform works is as an artist, you create a project and invite your fans, uh, raise funds from your fans on the project, track the progress of the project, and earn royalties from the project. And as a fan, you select the project you want to co own, support the project, track the progress of the project, and earn royalties from the project. We take 10% of the total for capital raised for each project, 2.5% of the royalties distributed back to NFT holders, and 2.5% of the secondary NFT market sales. Sounds is an example of an artist we help work with. We help raise uh, funds for his project, and just within four months, um, we've recouped our initial funds, and now we get to enjoy 30% of music royalties for the next two years. Currently, we have 14 artists on our wait list and five record labels in our pipelines. Uh, me and our team, I have experience as an Afrobeat record executive with three years experience in music marketing. My co-founder and CTO uh, has over four years experience as a full stack developer and a blockchain developer. And our head of product is an XPWC product consultant with an experience in fintech and banking. We hope you join us in our journey in Provo Labs. Thank you. Let's welcome to the stage Panacea. Thank you, everyone. I'm Ariadne, CEO of Panacea. And at Panacea, we're building software for care managers uh, to help them automate their workflows and amplify their impact. So care managers are the unsung heroes of healthcare. They're nurses and social workers that work one-on-one -on -one with individuals dealing with complex chronic conditions. And they'll spend hours assessing each unique situation and putting together a personalized care plan. They help coordinate services for those patients. So if you don't have an appointment with your doctor, they're on it. If you don't have the food, water, housing you need to stay out of a hospital, they're on it. They're really a patient's advocate. So they'll help you understand your benefits through your insurance and advocate for you if you're having difficulty accessing critical services or medications. I worked for over two years with care managers at Humana and can honestly tell you, no one works harder and more selflessly to help others. This is the person you want when you have a problem or more importantly, your family has a complex condition. So why doesn't everyone have one? Well, the reality is that care managers are expensive. They can cost between $90 and $250 per hour. A limited number of people will get access through their health insurance or a provider. But that number is limited because these programs are so expensive to run, up to 10% of an organization's administrative spend. And they're expensive because so much of what they do is manual. It's countless hours of documentation, phone tag, filling out paper forms, and occasionally having to fax them. So at Panacea, we are bringing their workflows into the 21st century, and we're first tackling the documentation piece. Our first product helps care managers automatically draft a care plan for their patients. From there, we'll be building out the tools to support them in executing those care plans, following up with patients, and figuring out who needs a little extra support. Our tool is easy to use. Care managers enter in a short summary of the patient. In this example, a woman with early stage Alzheimer's who needs support to be able to continue living independently in her home. From there, our model takes the information along with clinical gold standard guidelines, and it creates a draft of a care plan broken down into goals and tasks that they can further personalize. We launched on November 15th, and we've onboarded two customers. We offer our solution as a subscription. The price is based on the size of the organization and the number of care managers in the organization. 
Our team has over 20 years of experience in healthcare and software. My two co-founders are in the audience today, and they're very experienced engineers who are building out our platform in-house. We're super excited to continue building out our tools and helping support these critical healthcare workers. Thank you so much for your time tonight, and we would love to connect. All right, let's welcome to the stage, Balance. Hello everybody, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. My name is Darius Lawson, and I'm the co-founder of Balance, where we are bridging the digital gap in commercial banking. I'm gonna begin our story tonight by introducing you guys to John, the business banker. And it's his dream to seamlessly onboard his business clients, but unfortunately, his reality is a nightmare. You see, the problem behind this nightmare is that every day, business bankers have to manually, time intensively collect client information through so many inconsistent and chaotic channels. Think of phone, email, fax, whatever gets the job done, right? But to make matters worse, they store this information into silos that hinders their ability to share it with their business banking teams or even make it available for their most important activities, such as making a decision, giving us access. You see, the cost of doing business for commercial banks mean they'll spend about $60 million on commercial banking. It'll take their teams about a month to two months to actually onboard a single client. And for a business banker, it takes them two hours to upload data into a single system. Insane. But there's no need to fear because Balance brings John's dream to reality. As an API-based platform for business bankers to reduce the time and the friction it takes a client to open their business accounts. Now, how does this work? Through an application builder, we enable business bankers to create digital templates for any business account service that automates the collection and upload of their client information. This data is then securely stored in our client data hub that provides seamless access to business bankers, but also integrates with their existing operational systems like Salesforce to create a single source of truth. And last but not least, on-demand collaboration. We're removing those annoying data silos with collaboration to support seamless business banking data sharing securely. Now, commercial banks that use Balance will enjoy these six amazing benefits. But most importantly, we are empowering business bankers to be heroes that create frictionless, and consistent customer experiences that seamlessly onboard them to accounts, reduce friction, reducing churn, and increasing the client lifetime value for that bank. Now, how do we make money? Balance is a B2B software as a service, leveraging a usage-based pricing model. Our customers are commercial banks, our end users are client onboarding employees, and we charge them across their monthly usage of application templates, the volume of accounts onboarded, and the volume of client data transfers used on our platform, which helps us project the $50 a month per user revenue. Now, as a Maryland-based company, we've entrenched ourselves in this amazing entrepreneurship ecosystem, built our proof of concept in-house, and have conducted successful concept testing interviews that have validated our development of our MVP available in Q1 next year. Now, what you see on the screen is a team that executes, but actually come together to build balance under a shared belief that a sustainable and equitable future requires seamless financial access for commercial banking in our local communities. And across Yim's experience in banking and tech digital strategy, my B2B and B2C product management experience, and Melissa's UX and design experience enables us to bring balance to market, but more importantly, execute our vision, which is that balance will be the trusted medium for B2B and B2C data collection and sharing across all digital channels. And if you'd love to learn more about what we're building here at Balance, let's get in touch. Thank you. Let's welcome to the stage, Annie Exchange. Great show. Hello, my name is Yvonne Grincovich, and I'm the founder of Animation Nights New York and Annie Exchange. And I used to be a painter. So I would tell stories with one frame that I spent a month to create. And then I became an animator, and I learned about motion. And I worked in a variety of different mediums. I worked in web, uh, on commercials, and film. These are some of the projects that I worked on. And I loved this, and I felt like I found my tribe, right? My favorite thing to create was animated short films. And I would submit these films to festivals around the world in order to get accolades and to show people my work, to get eyeballs on what I made. And I got into festivals and I, I won some prizes. The problem is after the festival run, these projects had nowhere to go. And this is still a problem. 
So I created a different kind of festival that was focused on any exchange talent matching events. And we would connect animators to industry and create opportunity for them. And this festival is still going on. We hold over 22 events per year. We got great press. It's been amazing. What's interesting is that companies saw the success and came to us looking for curation for, the, for their projects and events. And this is great because it created opportunity for filmmakers and it generated revenue. So we took this a step further and created a platform which connects clients to animators. So no clients can curate content themselves. And as our client database grows, we create more opportunity for animators. We already work with a diverse group of partners and clients. And there's great opportunity in this marketplace. By 2030, the total addressable market will be over $587 billion. Our business model is based on a flat fee for project curation, a 10% commission fee on platform transactions, and flat platform subscription. There are other portfolio sites out there, but none of them are focused on quality, and none of them offer guided curation. Our team is from the talent ecosystem. We are curating all year round. We are filmmakers working for filmmakers, and that is what gives us an edge. So join us. Join Animation Nights New York and Annie Exchange because animators deserve a path forward and the audience is waiting. Thank you so much. Let's welcome to the stage panel AI. Hi everyone, my name is Raghib. I'm the founder and CEO of Panel AI. So we are solving IT downtime for enterprises. And one in three companies say that just one hour of IT downtime costs them a million dollars, which is a huge problem. Some of the reasons that, this, that the way that this is being solved right now is humans through site reliability engineers, which is something that I was previously in one of my jobs, as well as on-call engineers. And to be honest with you, the experience itself has been really, really bad, just because I would get pinged and paged at 2 a.m. at night and have to like wake up to resolve these incidents. So it comes from a personal pain point. So what we think, like not just the reputational, the money damage, but it's also, it damages your company at a reputational level. When you lose reputation, you lose clients, as well as you have really unhappy staff, which doesn't make for a good company. Right. And if we look at the team, I'm, I'm the CEO and founder, and I have about four years of technical experience working in IT problems and solving these exact problems. Uh, the CFO is Shamir, who has experience selling uh, B2B sales at uh, companies like BTIG. And we also have a couple of software engineers and B2B sales uh, staff within our company. And finally, our advisor, Vladimir, uh, who has exited other companies as well. So what is the solution? We're using, we're creating an AI generated bot that takes in your resources from your company and allows you to resolve these technic technical incidents automatically. And how do we do this? We take in your cloud computing layer, we take in your code layer, we take in the observability layer that you have, as well as other resources within the company, like existing documentation. We plug this into an open source uh, generative AI LLM, which is Llama 2 for us, and then we use that uh, to automatically detect what has happened and then suggest steps on how you can resolve it. And our end goal is to eventually actually resolve it on our, by ourselves using our application. Uh, the market size is that there's 176,000 enterprises in the world. We're going to charge them about $800,000 uh, each on average, which leaves us to a 17.6 billion total addressable market. Our competition right now is a company called Wild Moose, which are actually a YC company, so boo. <laughs> <laughs> And some ways that we're better than them are we don't actually like provide you suggestions on how to solve it and a chat bot, but we actually uh, actively try to resolve those incidents for you. And if the AI cannot resolve them automatically, then we suggest solutions in ways that you as an engineer can come in and resolve them. 
Uh, our roadmap is by December of this year, we want to finish launching our prototype, and by June of 2024, we want to have our first enterprise client. Thank you so much. Let's welcome to the stage, Latte. Hi, I'm Jerry. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Latte. Get this. Early professionals receiving mentorship are three times more likely than their peers to recruit into their target firms. They're also twice as confident in their professional ability and much more satisfied with their job. The problem? Mentorship is really hard to find. After tons of cold emails and waiting weeks upon weeks from different mentorship programs, you can't help but feel like this. Until Latte. Latte is a platform that democratizes mentorship by making it instant and accessible. Here's how we do it. This here is Kevin. He's an actual user of Latte during our beta, and he specializes in marketing and UI UX. This is what his consumer journey looks like. He first accesses relevant connections on demand. Then, our AI identifies Kevin's career needs based on this and curates a list of relevant mentors. He then requests mentorship from them instantly, and he's also able to book meetings with them without the hassle. During his time on Latte, he was able to be promoted to the chief of staff of interns at his startup. So here's our traction as of today. We have more than 400 downloads and have facilitated more than 500 connections like Kevin's. Our mentors are from top tier firms like Mazars, UB, UBS, IBM, you name it. And we're currently partnered with the NYU eLab as well as the NYU Career Center. Why now? Well, the fact is the spaces of jobs and networking are already effectively democratized by these companies. But for mentorship, you're kind of left in the dust. You have to fill out a bunch of Google Forms as well as get matched by Google Spreadsheets. Until Latte. Here's how it works. We monetize both the user side as well as the enterprise side who are able to purchase the Latte Premium for users. Uh, and we re-gift a small portion of this to mentors as a small token of our appreciation for their mentorship. All this results in one healthy mentorship ecosystem. Here's our revenue model. There's a free base plan where everyone is able to access mentorship on demand. And if you'd like more than that, uh, you're able to buy it for $15 a month. And of course, on the enterprise level, we have that other thing as well. OK, our go-to-market works in two different parts. Uh, in the first stage, we're partnering with campus partners, uh, specifically in terms of university career centers, entrepreneurship labs, and different student clubs. In the second stage, we're partnering with DEI funnels in top tier firms uh, such as UBS, IBM, and Morgan Stanley. The fact about our team is that we're students building something that students need. We have incredible founder market fit, and we really, really, really are motivated by our actual needs. So if you're interested in democratizing mentorship and changing it for the better, Let's grab a latte. Thank you. Let's welcome to the stage, Loomis. Hey, everyone. I'm Anna, founder of Loomis. Have you ever asked your friends or relatives to take a picture of you? Did you like the result? This is what happened with me all the time. Before Lumos, <laughs> I was a content creator and micro-influencer on Instagram. My revenue depended on frequency and quality of content I produced. However, I always had a problem of getting content with me on it. My friends and relatives were not good at it, while professional photographers and videographers were quite expensive. And this issue is not unique to influencers. Businesses also need to be present on social media to increase brand awareness, get loyal customers, and boost their sales. So both influencers and businesses need frequent, trendy, and affordable content. That's where Lumos comes in. Lumos is a marketplace for businesses and influencers to find vetted content creators and get photo and video content to foster organic social media growth. Our clients can search creators for, sorry, our clients can filter creators for price, location, availability, or provide the services, such as photo and video shoots, video editing, trend adaptions, and script writing. 
They can chat to discuss references and essential for the shoot and securely make payments through Stripe. Lumos perfectly fits in the modern world of social media. High quality cameras on mobile devices and powerful editing apps have democratized social media content creation. While working with real customers on a marketplace model, we realized that we can also develop an end-to-end -end AI solution for social media marketing. Lumos will provide tools to enterprises marketing teams to maximize the result from the single shoot content they acquire. This includes automated repurposing, adaption, and stylization for different, uh, different social media platforms to test creative formats and expand brand reach. Creator economy market is $60 billion. Traditional ads are costly and inefficient with rising customer acquisition costs. But here is our golden opportunity. Social media is becoming the primary search engine for Gen Z consumers. They literally use Instagram and TikTok instead of Google. We released a fully functional version of the app in September, onboarded 300 content creators in New York, Paris, and London, and started inviting clients. Among our first notable clients are influencers with 16 million followers, as well as uh, small business owners, everyday individuals, and coaches. We have a strong founder market fit. My experience as a content creator and micro-influencer provide us with unique uh, insights into both challenges and opportunities of social media. Together with my team, we are confident that we can disrupt the content creation market. Thank you for the attention and light up your content with Lumos. Next, let's welcome to the stage, next. Hi, I'm Kadisha. And I'm Nehika, and we're excited to tell you about Next. Today's beauty services are too generic for me. I can't just walk into any neighborhood salon, guaranteed they know how to style my hair. It's naturally coily and requires specialized skills. So I waste weeks asking friends for recommendations and surfing social media to find the stylist. Once I do, I sacrifice my weekend, spending up to three hours commuting, an additional five hours in a salon that's noisy, which is an overall poor and exhausting experience. And 350 women of color we spoke to have accepted experiences like this as the norm because there hasn't been a better way. Enter next, our marketplace connecting beauty pros with clients who have more money than time and want personalized services delivered to their doorstep. Our clients rave about our unmatched quality in half the time because unlike the beauty marketplaces of today that only ask when and where you want the service, Next also asks for your skin tone, hair type, hair texture, and more. No other platform asks for this mission critical information, but we do so we can match you not just to any pro, but the beauty pro with the right expertise for you, because no woman wants to walk into an appointment thinking, I wonder if they have the right shade to color match my skin tone, or walk out of an appointment thinking, no one knows how to style Asian hair. Why does it always end up looking flat? And hyper-personalization is a large untapped niche market. The average woman books at-home beauty services two and a half times a year at about $160. That means if we capture even 5% of the market, we're looking at a $900 million opportunity. For each booking, Next takes 25% and our pros take 75%, giving our pros 15% fair revenue share and an additional or an incremental $20,000 a year in, um, in their income. Uh, for our customers, they experience 50% time savings because we eliminate that beauty pro search and the commute process. We're targeting professionals, event goers, and moms who have annual household income of over $150,000, which assumes sufficient disposable income for them to indulge in our premium services. We launched our MVP in April and have grown our monthly bookings by 350% and expect continued growth as we scale our New York go-to-market partnerships. We are the only platform that has personalized services with delivery to you. And unlike Thumbtack, Yelp, we're dedicated to beauty only. Because what woman wants to find her hairstylist where she also finds her plumber? 
Next was made for and by women of color. This is personal. There's no bigger driver to make personalized beauty succeed because we need it for ourselves. And our combined backgrounds as a licensed esthetician, techies, Columbia MBA, and now Techstars alumna have equipped us to make beauty booking smarter. Thank you. Let's welcome to the stage, Joylet. Hi everybody, I'm Natalie, the co-founder of Joylet, a marketplace for baby gear and toddler toy rentals. Welcoming a new baby into the home is one of the most exciting times for a new parent. However, the mental load of this new addition quickly gets heavy. The mental load is that constantly running to-do list in the back of your mind, and she's thinking about feeding, diapering, changing, um, attention, and how is she going to get all this stuff for the new baby? Speaking of stuff, young families like mine are drowning in it, and owning stuff is stressful. The pressure to buy at this stage is huge. Parents are really worried about making sure their kid is meeting their developmental milestones, and there's anxiety about leaving like the baby being left behind, so they're spending a lot. Then the baby might only use these items for three, six months before they grow and are on to the next. Then good luck trying to sell it. <laughs> Thanks to scammers, Facebook Marketplace has become a huge pain and you can't donate baby gear because of safety concerns. So parents are potentially setting the stuff out in the trash or giving it away feeling guilty. The whole process is expensive, time-consuming, inefficient, and wasteful. Parents are spending over $6,000 and wasting countless hours of their time, all while over 2 million pieces of gear go into the landfill every year. Our solution is Joylet, a curated rental marketplace for durable baby gear and toddler toys. We allow parents to use items and swap them in and out as baby grows from birth until kindergarten. Unlike the status quo, parents are not left worrying about storage or reselling. Instead, they get convenience and peace of mind. We're the preferred rental engine by top brands in the industry like Baby Bjorn, Slumberpod, Wonderfold, and more. Here's how it works. We ask you some questions, we get your info, and then you're onboarded into the rental roadmap. Thanks to our customer data and algorithms, we're able to figure out the gear you need before you do, making personalized matches and recommendations for your child. The um, family at home gets to rent and return from Joylet, and <clears throat> so they get to rent and return at home from Joylet, and they're making a sustainable decision they can feel good about while their house is becoming less cluttered, which is amazing. This right here is our newborn bundle. So if you were onboarded to our roadmap at the newborn stage, you would pay $99 a month and get access to all the gear baby needs for the first year. This was actually just named a Fast Company World Changing Idea last March. And as, thank you, <laughs> um, and as baby grows out of this roadmap, they'll be onboarded into a new one. So you can see how we can keep families within our platform for six years, spending multiple thousands of dollars with us. The market is big and ready for this solution. It's $35 billion of baby gear and toy sales, and there's a lot of amazing tailwinds that are moving towards rentals. The sharing economy is actually growing at a 32% CAGR, and resale is expected to outpace traditional retail by 11 times. All this is being driven by millennials and Gen Z, who are the parents of today and tomorrow. On this journey, I'm accompanied by my amazing team. My co-founder, Allie, has a wealth of experience from United Rentals, where she led M&A and strategy, acquiring over 20 rental companies. My background is in consumer marketing for brands like Starbucks, Hershey's, State Farm, and more, and we're supported by our great team down below. So thank you, everybody, for your time, and would love to connect. Let's welcome to the stage, Pear Gap. Hi, everybody. I'm Nikki Murkison, the founder of Pear Gap. And Pear Gap is a co-buying real estate platform. I've developed Pear Gap because incomes are flat, interest rates are high, and home prices are out of control. Property ownership today feels impossible. As institutional investors dominate the single-family market, we risk becoming a renter's economy, and it's critical that we address this problem so that millions of Americans don't end up being renters forever. 
ParaGap is a platform that connects family, friends, and non-married buyers to purchase property together. We enable them to combine their financial resources and we help to mitigate the, the issues that come along with co-buying. Today, we have over 860 members of our platform. Um, we also have channel partnerships with major industry professionals and when we initially launched, we realized that we had to create education for co-buyers, not just for buyers, but also for housing professionals. In, 2020, in 2023, um, we developed a education, co-buying education course for real estate agents and lenders to teach them how to increase their sales um, by introducing their clients to co-buying. Um, we were able to develop these partnerships and in the last six months, we were able to increase to 250 new users, 80 new agents, and six new paying customers. Thank you. Co-buying is when two or more people um, purchase a property together and um, they're sharing in responsibility. Um, they can choose to share their, the down payment. They can also choose to share the monthly mortgage payments um, and also all the costs associated with sharing property. In addition to that, they can choose from various options, um, including single family homes, multifamily homes, and condos. Um, this gives them more access to better properties and prime neighborhoods. Our subscription, our plan is around $100, and co-buyers have the option to add on additional services, but they also get those premium services. Co-buying is not new. In 2020, there were, I'm sorry, co-buying is not new. Um, in 2020, the um, buyers that purchase for non-married buyers, non-married co-buyers with 276 billion. Our team of vet uh, professionals um, have extended experience, various experience, and I also lead that team growing up in New York City, having housing insecurities, and being able to get into the real estate industry. Property ownership changed my life and I'm determined to make that possible for others. Please follow Paragraph's journey. Thank you. Let's welcome to the stage, Legislate! Local governments have the most significant impact on your everyday lives from the roads you drive on to the schools your children attend. But this fabric of our everyday lives relies heavily on public servants like my co-founder Vivian, who struggle to maintain their day-to-day -day operations at a baseline. With a fraction of an already understaffed workforce, the pandemic taught local governments what would happen when their the pandemic taught local governments what would happen if they failed to modernize their modern workflows. The problem is that there are a lot of manual, time-intensive tasks to get approval for even the simplest things. And that's thousands of hours that could be allocated towards critical initiatives. Legislate changes that. Our platform utilizes generative AI to streamline labor-intensive tasks in the legislative process, from speaking points to legislative proposals. And this process uh, is not manual. So instead of working manually, our users just simply fill out a form and they get well-defined uh, research, automated formatting, and data-driven uh, drafts. And the impact of this is that it not only reduces workloads for local governments, but it saves them 10 to 15 hours per document they produce. And the result of this is that 
it addresses the two most critical problems in local government, the labor shortage and uh, the skill gap in their workforce. Of the 90,000 local governments across the United States, we've identified a target market of 19 and a half thousand cities who are struggling with resource constraints, uh, who are struggling with resource constraints uh, in their legislative process. That's a $50 billion market. Unlike our competitors like Granicus and Civic Plus, who charge $50,000 a year on average for services like ours, we tailor our pricing to a flat annual fee uh, for, to each local government's specific needs and budgets. In the last eight months, Legislate has proven product market fit uh, with three pilot customers. And we have seven real legislative proposals undergoing the legislative process currently, and two have already made an impact on over 400,000 people as if in the forms of laws and adopted resolutions. Our five products have been deployed over 600 times, averaging three iterations a day. And meet our team. We have five years of history working on impacting local communities together. During the pandemic, Roger and I worked together to help struggling Puerto Rican restaurants. And Vivian and Roger helped champion fair wages for musicians. And now, we came together to drive change with Legislate. So if you're interested in joining our journey to transform local government, please reach out. Our CEO's information's on the screen. Thank you. So welcome to the stage, Cosan Reviews. Attention shoppers, the mall is closing. <laughs> Traditional retail is in big, big trouble. The retail apocalypse is still very much in full swing, and statistics shows that 87.6% of Gen Z prefer online shopping. And as businesses are coming and staying online, we need innovative solutions so that trust, value, convenience, and enjoyment of online shopping isn't lost. Hello, my name is Alana. I'm a serial entrepreneur, a shopaholic, a software engineer at Google, and a responsible AI maven. Hi, my name is Lucretia Williams. I'm a UX researcher and a research scientist in Human Center AI. And at Cosign Reviews, we are bringing trustworthiness back to our e-commerce consumers so that brand and engagement online isn't lost. Also, our website assists our um, consumers with review writing for small and medium-sized clothing and apparel brands. Brands. Existing in the online e-tail landscape is a daunting process for the consumer. They often have to sift through a bevy of incentivized and uninformative reviews. Also, finding small reliable brands online is a chore. And when you do and you make a purchase, and then they ask you to write a review, thus beginning a new time-consuming and daunting process. However, consumers aren't the only one facing these challenges. Brands are also in the same boat, or should I say, <laughs> cart. <laughs> so, 84% of millennials don't trust conventional advertising. And we know that reviews build trust, but only 5 to 10% of people are writing them, and roughly 31% of online reviews are fake. Cosign is the solution that's great for, great for consumers, but it's even better for businesses. Through our proprietary large language models, we guide the users through crafting an intelligent, constructive, and fashionable review in a fraction of the time. Then we've surfaced these reviews to the affinity networks of users that have similar interests to them, and then that way we can completely eliminate the process of sifting through pages and pages of irrelevant reviews. This allows brands to engage directly with the most influential voices in those affinity networks and that they can then offer incentives and brand perks. But there are a lot of companies trying to do what we do, but none of them are able to combine our passion for fashion with AI, affinity-based recommendations, and exclusive brand perks. 
We are addressing a total market of $183 billion in the fashion e-commerce space in the US. And we are poised to make revenue through offering an analytics subscription service, targeted advertising, sponsored content, and affiliate marketing. So before you check out today, make sure that you check us out on LinkedIn. Welcome to Cosign Reviews, where we try to make reliable brands, finding great products, and writing reviews simple and easy. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's welcome to the stage, Let Us Nudge. Hi everyone, my name is Rehan. I am the founder of Let Us Nudge, and I want to talk to you about how we're helping restaurants during both busy and slow times. This is awful, right? We've all been here before. Packed restaurant, Friday night. This line is out the door. 45 minute to two hour wait. I mean, I personally would not wait in this line. You know, I would go to the next restaurant. I don't know if you'd like to wait here. This is even worse, actually, right? This restaurant is empty. They are not making any money, basically. Food and drink has gone bad, and you know, this restaurant is going to go out of business. What has happened since the pandemic, $240 billion loss in the restaurant industry since 2020. 48% um, of these restaurants are willing to use QR codes. So with that said, that's what we are. We are the solution, what we feel, for restaurants during both busy and slow times through our QR codes. This is how it works. This is the Stanley Black & Decker team. They are talking about products. They're having a great time in the Inner Harbor. Basically, they've forgotten about their time, right? There's about 50 people waiting to get a table. So long short, the restaurant now has the power to nudge them. In this case, let's give them a $10 nudge. Marty gets the nudge on his phone. He can actually hit no, because of course, it's hospitality. We're never gonna kick you out of a restaurant. But Marty chooses to hit yes. He gets the $10 nudge. And guess what? They have 10 minutes now to vacate that table. That's kind of how it works. Here is Jerome, watching the Baltimore Ravens on his couch. <laughs> Basically, he gets a nudge on his phone for a buy one, get one free pizza, or, you know, pasta in this case. So Jerome hits the yes. He's on his way to his favorite pasta, Italian restaurant. It's a big market. It's a $15 billion market. And, um, you know, we play in this space for $3 billion for reservation and table management software. We are not a reservation system. We are not a loyalty program. We feel like we're a derivative competition, but we do feel we've priced it right. And we do pitch our enterprise package, which is $250 per month per location. This is the fun stuff, right? We have restaurants on board for both our solutions, the busy times and slow times. We are in four states and growing. We're about to launch in Texas. And really cool about Nathan's Famous, they're you know, one of our biggest brands on board at the moment, and we're piloting with these other household names, such as Arby's, Domino's, and Papa John's. Got 300,000 folks using our system at the moment. And this stuff is awesome as well. Obviously being part of Techstars, International Accelerator in Austin, start in New York City, and some of the unsolicited marketing that we've received from some of these journals. It's just been fabulous. There is no I in team. We've got an amazing team, just core strengths in IT and marketing, and just backed by some restaurateurs, as well as some really business savvy folks. So thank you very much. We hope to nudge you into or out of a restaurant very soon. Let's welcome to the stage, Slip Signal Technologies. Hello, my name is Paige Shelbourne, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Slip Signal Technologies, and we're developing technology to reduce electromagnetic interference and improve the performance of digital logic circuits. So to explain to you what this is, so early this year, I had bought a brand new car, and then months later, I received this recall notice telling me to bring my car back to the dealership to fix an electrical issue. So I was pretty annoyed that I had to sit four hours for them to fix the electrical issue. Um, but if I had not brought my car back to the dealership, then my car would have malfunctioned. 
So if this is an experience that we all share, or at least share in the fact of receiving a recall notice and bringing your car back to the dealership to fix an electrical issue, then that is what we are solving. Statistics show that electrical systems failures cause 2.2 million car accidents per year. And 97% of those electrical failures are caused by electrical magnetic interference failures. So EMI EMC is kind of like a, a QA, QC check that all electronic products must go through before, it's, um, before it can be passed and go to market. So what we have done, we have developed a new generation of digital logic circuitry. It's called the Especially Efficient Digital Logic, or better known as CETO. And CETO can reduce electromagnetic interference uh, failures by 70%, and therefore we are positively positioned to save 1.5 million lives from car accidents. <laughs> So not only can our technology be integrated into automobiles, but it can also be integrated into consumer electronics, medical devices, telecommunication systems, and even electronic systems in the military. So our business model is similar to ARM technology in that we will um, sell a library of design files to show electronic companies how to build their own circuitry integrated with our technology. So we would charge a flat fee plus royalty percentages per component used. So the integrated circuit market in the U.S. industry alone is $284 billion, and with 5% market capture, we're looking at capturing $5 billion. So we have conducted 106 customer discovery interviews today, and we received one letter of intent so far. <laughs> so we are that team. We are doctors, we are scientists, we are engineers, and we can bring this technology to fruition and show electronic manufacturers how to pass QAQC checks the first time around. So here are our achievements today and what we have accomplished so far. And here's our contact information. So I leave you with one note. Imagine a world with minimum to no electronic failures. That is what Slip Signal is offering. Thank you so much. Let's welcome to the stage one, two, one. Hey everyone, I'm the CEO and founder of One to One. My name is Pratik Desai. Let's talk a little bit about our mission at One to One. We're helping bring marketers and merchandisers closer together. And we're doing this by helping them adopt their current marketing technology. Over the last year and a half, we've generated 1.3 million in revenue by helping, thank you, by helping merchandisers and marketers get closer together by stabilizing the marketing technology that they're using today. It doesn't work for them. It consistently breaks. And this is in a $1.2 trillion industry across retail and consumer group verticals. So what problem are we solving? The problem with marketing technology is that it's too expensive, it's constantly breaking, and it doesn't generate value. It's $2 million in overhead. You have to pay services companies $2 million just to keep the lights on. And of course, the Accentures of the world love that. It costs $1 million in licensing fee. So now you're $3 million in and you haven't even seen value yet. By the time it's all said and done, you've implemented the technology, you've punted 75% of your scope, you've got poor data signals going to your AI, your AI doesn't work for you, the technology doesn't work for you. So what's the solution? We're introducing Regana. Regana is a single API, AI-driven marketing technology. It seamless, seamlessly integrates with your data servers, with your database, removing the need to sell that back to you. We don't black box your data. It's accessible to you and only you. It generates value for you by allowing you to take that two million you would have spent on overhead and funneling it to your critical thinking resources who can squeeze the ROI, who can focus on strategy. And oh, by the way, we're only licensing this to you for a fraction of the licensing costs that the sales forces of the world would charge you. And we can generate 200 million off of that. 
So let's talk about the team. I mentioned already, already that I'm Pratik Desai, CEO and founder. Along with me, I've got Sage, and both of us recently came out of the Salesforce marketing leadership world. And with us, we've got Christopher Erslinger, who most recently worked at the CERN Hydrogen Collider, working big data, and he's with us making sure that we're not only solving this problem, but we're solving it at scale. In the last few months, we've actually piloted this technology with a Fortune 100 company with extreme success and been able to seamlessly stabilize their marketing technology and bring their merchandisers and marketers together to focus on value and creation of ROI. In the next few months, we're gonna go ahead and pilot this with more Fortune 500 companies with an intent to fully launch in April 2024 with our first crack at holiday in November 2024. So watch out for us, because we're coming. Welcome to the stage, Lucia. Hello, everyone. We've always almost made it to the end, so thank you for uh, sticking with us. My name is Grace, and I'm the founder and CEO of Lucia. When my co-founder and I were in college, we helped pay our way through by working as travel advisors, you know, planning other people's trips. When we graduated, there was a lot of holes in the way that we operated. So we started a company called TripKit that was essentially doing back-end operations and admin for other travel agency businesses. And it worked really well. We grew to over 100 users, but that was kind of the problem. It was a service-based business, and once we had 100 users, things started breaking. And so we decided to start Lucia, which was a freelancer marketplace for the hospitality industry. We wanted to help bring flexible work to travel advisors. But as we built that company, we actually started getting interest from hotels. And we digged in to some more research, did dozens of customer interviews, and actually found that the hospitality industry at large was decimated by one of the worst talent shortages ever. We found that this was a mix of the pandemic, laying off over 80% of the workforce, but also no one wanted to return. A lot of Gen Z, younger, and many other different types of workers, like working moms, weren't able or didn't want to come back into the hospitality industry. And so instead, they found other jobs, became Uber drivers, TikTok influencers, but not working at hotels and other hospitality companies. And so we decided to look deeper and found that over 53% of hotels are still understaffed today, not during the pandemic, today. So we took our freelancer marketplace that was now getting interest from hotels and realized that we could expand into that market and bring contractor and freelance work to the hospitality industry at large and provide a much greater impact. So today, when we look at flexible work and where it exists in the industries at large, we see that you can get your taxi driver to someone who's doing your taxes all through flexible work. Whether you're looking online, in person, it doesn't matter. Flexible work is something that's thriving across other industries. So why not take it to the largest labor market in the world, hospitality? So we launched our platform in January of this year. Since launch, we've had over 520K in GMV, with about a 50% take rate, bringing us to about 265K in revenue. We have over 300 businesses using us, and actually some major partnerships with companies like Virtuoso and recently announced Classic Vacations. And we're really, really excited for some of the partnerships that we have planned to announce next year. But most importantly, Businesses that come online and start using us stick with us with over a 93% retention rate and increased spend over time when they use us. We make money in three ways. Any of the contract work labor that's done on our platform, we collect a commission of. And we also charge a subscription or enterprise package for anyone that pays to use our, our platform. But most importantly, our team is incredibly poised to build out this business. My co-founder Sarah and I went to college together, were travel advised together, and also built out our initial company and are now working at Lucia together. But because we didn't have the technical experience, we decided to loop in Brian, who not only was our classmate at Cornell in the hotel school, but also was an incredible developer at another freelancer marketplace. And together, we're the team that's going to bring gig work to the largest labor market in the world. Thank you so much.
Welcome to the stage to wrap us up for the evening, my Balbo! All right, peace and love, everyone. My name is Jonathan Celestin, and I am one of the co-founders of My Balbo. We are the home for the next generation of change makers. In case you were wondering, My Balbo is actually short for My Ballot Box. So my co-founders and I, we came together right around the tail end of 2020. So this is during the heart of the pandemic. It's also during the heart of all the Black Lives Matter marches. And what we, we have tons of friends across the political spectrum. But we found that on the right, we had friends that were really upset about the mask mandates and their kids being taken taken out of school, but they didn't know who was on their school board. And we had friends on the left who had really strong opinions about policing and police brutality, but didn't know who their sheriff was or that that was even an electable position. So my Babel in its first iteration was actually just a technology that streamlined your elected officials. But we wanted to take it a step further. So we knew that was only sort of seasonal use. And what we wanted to do was add a, a social aspect to it. So we have what we call round tables, which are virtual video chat rooms in our app. So. A little bit about the team. Again, my name is Jonathan Celestin. Um, I graduated from Columbia University having majored in political science. Shortly thereafter, I moved to uh, DC and worked under the Obama administration, studying the impacts of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, my sister with the big, beautiful hair, she is actually retired from her tenure in the government as the highest ranking African American woman in Homeland Security on the West Coast. And my younger sister with the bob, she is an amazing mother of two and still works for the military to this day, negotiating multi million dollar contracts between our military and her foreign assets. And that third young lady that stands in between them, that's actually our mom. She is not officially a part of the team, but in ethos and in spirit, she is very much a part of our team. So if you're watching tonight, mom, shout out to you. <laughs> All right, so let's move forward to the, actual, um, to the actual features and functionality. So what you're looking at right here are our actual round tables. So as a user, you have access to both live and on-demand round tables. If you start a round table yourself as a user, you have the ability to reach across the table. And what that does is it sends a signal out to other users within your vicinity that somebody's hosting a round table and they're inviting people from different lived experiences to hop into the round table so that you can facilitate a robust discussion. All right, so this right here is what it looks like when we streamline your elected officials. So if you were to click on an actual profile for an elected representative, if it is an election cycle, you'll see the incumbent versus the actual challengers. You'll see their platforms, and you also get to see a great deal of detail about them. A little quick note about the town halls. So with the town halls, if you are an elected representative or a verified candidate, you can actually start your own town halls. And what's really important about this is that it signals to people within your constituents that you're going live, irrespective of if they follow you or know who you are. So what that does is it sort of circumvents that whole education process that oftentimes is the biggest hurdle to people getting engaged, right? I don't know who my city manager is. I don't even know what a city manager does. But if they go live, you get automatic access. That also levels the playing field for politicians and candidates who may not have the same access to funding so that they can get in front of their constituents in a very powerful way. All right, so we have a lot of powerful partnerships. Uh, one of note for tonight is Vote.org. Um, we partner with Vote.org to create a one-stop shop on our app so our users can get and stay um, educated, get themselves um, uh, registered to vote, find the po um, closest polling location, and what have you. And we have a lot of powerful partnerships in the pipeline. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, so we have a three-pronged go-to-market strategy, influencers, the 2024 elections, and our partnerships. A quick note about our revenue streams. We have several revenue streams. We have uh, static bottom Google banners within our roundtables. We also have the ability to have um, private rooms that come at a cost. And when we get to a critical mass, we will implement data monetization. Again, guys, my name is Jonathan Celestin, and I am one of three scrappy, audacious co-founders who still believe in the promise and the, and the potential of our country to come together. So we ask that you help us as we build the home for the next generation of change makers. Thank you, guys. What do you think? Are our founders amazing or what? All right, so uh, to connect with Jonathan or any of the folks, you can scan their QR code. That's going to take you to a connection point where we can get you connected with them if you'd like to follow up. Thankfully, you can connect with them a little bit later tonight as well. I want you to bring your attention back now to the audience awards. So again, uh, we are taking 
votes on this here. So go ahead and get out that Slido app that you downloaded a little bit earlier in the program. And we're going to give you about a minute and 30 seconds or so to vote. So think about these awards. Who do you feel really brought it tonight? Who are you really excited about get, engaging with their platforms? Um, I want to let you know that you can meet with the founders up here after our presentation is over. I am going to ask them to hang up here near the front for about five minutes. After that five minutes, I'm going to let them have a free for all. Go to the bar, get themselves a plate, enjoy themselves, celebrate this awesome landmark that they have achieved. Um, we're so excited for you to continue to engage with them, to meet them further, and to facilitate a little bit of that voice, I'd like to welcome up Grace McBride and Katie Shook, who are two of our founders. Come on up, ladies. They're going to give you a little bit of perspective, just what their experience has been like in this pro program. So let's welcome Grace and Katie. Thank you everyone for coming tonight and we just wanted to share a little bit about some of the parts of the program that we loved most. Absolutely. I would say it is absolutely true that 100% of us are 100% better in tonight's presentation because of this program. The master classes, the mentoring, absolutely. And um, you know, just the time and practice that Audra, Jerome, Alex and Olga spent with us were, was incredible. Yeah, and I think I can attest to all the other founders here that some of the hours that we spent with our mentors, with the team, um, honestly changed our businesses. Like, yes, our pitches were great and we rehearsed them a lot and we did a great job there, um, but I don't honestly know where we'd be now as a team uh, if it wasn't for all of the mentors that helped us really grow and shape as founders and helped us build out so for some of us, completely do different new revenue channels, di different ways to operationalize and go to market. Um, and it was just a life-changing experience, I think, for a lot of us within our companies. Absolutely. And I'd like to call out um, Masterclass. Two of, I would say, our favorite Masterclasses mm -hmm. were, are in the room tonight, Marty <laughs> and Joe. <laughs> Looking at you. Um, yes? High props, high props. They talked about... Um, well, one of my favorite parts was honestly talking about um, one, and I can speak to this personally, we had to talk about with uh, Marty how to work with the big businesses. Yeah. And I can actually tell you, I can't say what business yet, but thanks to you, I actually learned about how you need to engage and have several different stakeholders in businesses, how you need to start making friends because in all different aspects of the business because they all need to work together, how to become friends with the assistants because that'll really be how you get things done in these businesses. And for me, I'm now working with three different very, very large businesses that we're hoping to close some deals with. And I attribute a lot of our learnings back to the notes of one of those master classes. So that's Absolutely. just one example. Yes. And with Joe, actually, one of the things he said, we actually use when we talk about realists now, um, he said, diversity DEI measures cannot be a bolt on. They have to be built in and from the get-go. And that's actually something that we believe very strongly in our product. And we took, Joe, your words are now being repeated. Sorry <laughs> about that. Um, but uh, we took that idea and we incorporated that as we talk about our product. So super helpful. These are just two examples and uh, we could go on and on. We can go on and on. We will go on We're going to keep going yes. on and on. Another piece of the program. I mean, we might start you know, like, dancing yeah. up here. We'll you, see. We you, can do this. Yeah. I will also say that we had a chance to have some of the uh, mentors come in and did like an in-person panel. So we had Roboke founder over here um, talk a little bit. Sorry for calling you out. Um, and also, um, I don't know if he's here tonight. I can't really see all that well up here. But from Gig Pro, we had a bunch of different mentors come in person and basically talk to us about their real experiences being founders. And I think one of the things that they pointed pointed out was, as we mentioned earlier, you need to have the community around you and, and being able to you know, open up with other founders, um, but also about how you can lean on each other to actually work together and build up. And so we were talking five minutes ago about us, Lucia, helping recruit new contractors through Realist. And so I think one of the things that we learned from you guys is how to lean on your cohort, not just emotionally and mentally, but also actually within your businesses and how that can be you know, a way to build upon your companies. Yeah, and one of the things that Techstars 
has as part of the program is these cohort meetings. And uh, the cohort yeah. leaders, I'll tell you, our cohort leader, Twee, <laughs> go ahead, stand up there. <laughs> Twee, <laughs> cohort leader with the mostest. Um, it was, it's a really great way, just like you said, um, emotionally, but also cheering each other on in terms of our businesses and our um, both our successes and our failures, importantly, our failures and our, our setbacks, because it is a rocky journey and it is, a, it is an emotional roller coaster and it's really great to have support. So thank you everyone, thank you Audra, Jerome, everyone that's a part of the room tonight, everyone who gave us a leg up and will continue being a part of our journey. And thank you so much for coming out tonight to support us all. Yes. I need the clicker. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Uh, we appreciate you while we feverishly tallied votes. Um, so um, we're coming back to these awards. And so uh, it's, it seems like we've got some trends, actually. Um, so the most original idea, uh, third place, let us nudge. <laughs> Second place for our most original idea today, Realist. Give it up for Realist. And the most original idea on the night, uh, a minute and a half into voting, uh, My Balbo. <laughs> now we'll move to best speaker. Let's best speaker tonight. Um, number three, let us nudge. <laughs> Second place, realist. <laughs> Sensing a trend here. Uh, best speaker of the evening, my Balbo. Congratulations to Jonathan. All right, uh, down to uh, the most potential to change the world for good. Sorry, I'm trying to read Jerome's handwriting. Um, number three, realist. <laughs> Number two, let us nudge. Apparently you guys really like to eat some food. Uh, and number one, my Balbo. You guys might, you might care a little bit about the election cycle, I'm sensing. All right. Um, the company that you're looking forward most to utilizing, third place in this category, Latte. Congratulations to Jerry. Some Jerry fans in the room. Uh, number two, let us nudge. Are, are we hungry? Is that what's going on? Um, and number one, my Balbo. Very nice. Congratulations. All right. So um, wrapping it up, I just want to tell each and every one of you founders how amazing you guys are. The opportunity to work with you over the last 10 weeks has been incredible. We believe in your resilience. We believe in your creativity. We believe in your ability to pivot when needed. We are so excited to see what you guys are gonna continue building. And I, myself, am very eager over the next month and a half or so to see some of you get into some accelerators at Techstars. <laughs> We just want to let you know that we're so incredibly proud of you. We hope that you are so proud of yourselves. Again, we can't wait to continue to see what you're building. Uh, again, to the audience, anyone in the room who would like to communicate with the founders, they're going to stay and hang, up, hang out in their seats for the next five minutes or so. Um, otherwise, congratulations, founders. You made it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to everybody stay up here. Um, terrific. I mean, I voted for a lot of people, um, a lot of others, I can tell you. But um, I congratulate my Balbo for getting the vote now algorithm set up for that machine. That was pretty impressive. But congratulations. You guys did a great job. Uh, but, but right now, I'd, 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 I'd like to reiterate again completely impressive group of founders. I've seen founders in our accelerators, I've seen founders all over the world. Um, to a person, you're, you're very exceptional. Uh, but right now, I'd like to wrap it up and giving a big hand 
of applause in a minute to Audra. She took this on. It was difficult, virtual, in person, big group, um, geography, partnering with Upsurge, uh, and just did a great job. Great team, great leader. So Audra, thank you so much for being an exceptional leader. <laughs>